Sue Gelber, and I've been involved in the Soul Collage community since 2004. I'm Leo Sheeran. I'm a teacher for 27 years, elementary school art teacher. The last 17 years spent overseas teaching in five different countries. I'm Lucinda Bell and I'm a psychotherapist. I work with children and families. I'm Nancy Hauschold. I'm a life and leadership personal development coach. I work with introverted women in business. I'm Sonia Kleschik. I'm an artist. I'm working primarily in painting and collage. I'm an art teacher and I teach collage. I was a chef, uh, you know, educator at a big uh, school in Manhattan. I opened a restaurant. I had an art background early on. My husband is an artist. My name is Mark Tellis. I've been part of a men's movement uh, group for 27 years. I come in through psychologists because I'm a therapist and for and a Jungian therapist. Hi, I'm Felice Willett. Well, I'm Paul Azegap. I'm Jen Aronson. We're both in the mental health field. I'm an expressive therapist, so I am experienced in several modalities. So I've been in practice for over 20 years. I have been a coordinator for team building activities. I heard about Soul Collage through a friend. Yeah, and right away I knew this has my name on it. This is for me. I'm Sandra Dolbersmith. I had a really good friend invite me to her group and I knew nothing. She thought it would be a good fit for me. I learned about the Soul Collage through sand play. And uh, sand play is a process in where you use miniatures in a tray of sand. When I was introduced to Soul Collage, is that images would move back and forth between modalities. So it was very fascinating for me. I found this training because I needed CEUs for my therapy license. I first came to Soul Collage by a friend who knows me very, very well. I'm very visual, I'm very um, insightful. And she introduced me to Soul Collage and I took to it and I loved it, absolutely loved it. So I went to a few workshops. I came to it from the art standpoint. When I made my first card, I was like excited because it was so beautiful. I have an old art therapist friend that I've known for 30 plus years and she told me she's doing this process now. I said, "Woo, that sounds really right up my alley. And so I've done some classes with her, making cards, reading cards and loving the process. Fundamental but fun. It was so simple and so, you know, yeah. so fun. It was kind of a no-brainer. I was listening to my higher power, I think. There was an easel and it said Soul Collage Workshop. Something drew me. I'd never heard the name before. And I, I went outside and I said, you know what? There's a Soul Collage Workshop in an hour. I have to go. What did I know when I made my first Soul Collage card? I got this little five by eight card and I'm going, you're kidding, how am I going to do anything with this? And then something clicked inside and I said, well, this is just a creative challenge. I'll see what this format's like. And I've been doing it ever since. That was in 2010. I made my very first card. When we went into the room, there were lots of different images laid out on the table, which just drew me because I love photography anyway. I was a photographer. And I would just, you, you would pick up images that drew you and you don't necessarily know why. And then you would sit at a table and you get a five by eight card, scissors and glue. And you begin to arrange the images that you chose without really understanding why. And then the next step would be writing about them. With Soul Collage, the images find us. I began to collage what are called parts of ourselves. Strength. I love that card. All you need yeah. are scissors and glue and some images. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Intuition, images, and imagination. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, in the beginning, I made cards just because I thought it was cool, art, cutting things out and putting together different colors and textures and images. I just thought like, wow, this is cool. Look at this thing I made. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking about, does this have meaning for me? But I picked those images yeah. for a reason. And I put them together for a reason. And then when I started really looking at them and, and saying, what does this mean? I'll just read the book and put out some glue and and some cards and some scissors and we understood the value of having a training where the facilitator really does need to have some skills especially if emotional content comes up when a person is making the cards and doing the reading you don't have to be a therapist by any means uh, to do this but you do need to have enough 
kind of a sense of how to hold the space, not to interfere with the person's process. I've always found that images come from my unconscious, and I started to notice patterns that repeat, and I know there's messages in art, collage art. I'm loving all the parts, the shadows, usually have a silver lining. So well, here's the chef card. It really talks to me about the dilemma I had as a chef. There's a, a female hand and a male hand. It's this heavy masculinity in this field. You have to be wisecracking with the guys. There's this female character in the back, very feminine. And that was always in the shadow, the feminine hands. They were always in the shadow but they were still there. It was fraught with uh, tension for me being a chef always. But I loved it nonetheless. So that's my chef card. <laughs> I have one that's got a microphone and th what the card represents is I want to speak up if I see injustice. There are many and they're uniform, but these are all yours. And these are things, they're images that have come from the inside to be put on cards and given voice and in that process you heal. We pick them, we don't know why, but that image is calling me. So once we combine the images onto a soul collage card and we read the card, in other words, we give voice to what the card is sharing with us, it's just so revealing about the parts within us. For many years I've been thinking, I need something more. I can't just do the talk. And I've been open to exploring other ways of getting to the unconscious that is beyond the words. Sometimes it's almost word, like there's no words, but yet they come to us. The cards speak to us through, you know, they're part, every bit of that soul collage card is a part of us. It, my cards all represent different parts of me. And I can't tell you the therapeutic growth that this has off opened up for me. It's, it's like getting out of our minds, out of our heads, into our hearts. Ask a question, go to your deck, pull a card, and see what your netters have to say about that question. And we had a reading today with three people. And each of us had four cards, and we asked them a question. And each card, one at a time, had something to say. And it wasn't from my mind. It wasn't from my, I'm not sure where it came from, but it came from wisdom. It came from the card. And it happened with each of the other two people in the group. And it surprised me. Where did this information come from? I was afraid that I was going to pull a card that has nothing to do with the question. And that hasn't happened. All the cards that I pulled were, they perfectly made sense for the question that I asked. So it really is this synchronicity sort of thing that's amazing. I've done a lot of inner work myself. It always has that surprise where like, wow, I didn't think that nasty part of me had something to say that actually is opening up a new window for growth. The process of being able to put parts of ourselves out in image form to be able to see the parts of ourselves reflected is really powerful, that externalization. And then to be able to do it in community, to be able to feel the safety of connection with others, and then to see the power of our intuition as we do readings and as we find answers to things that concern us has been really powerful. This weekend, I had the experience of when we were doing a reading with the cards, I had the experience of understanding that these netters are my friends. They, I, I often have felt very lonely uh, as a child and as an adult. Even though there are people around me who love me and I know that, I still have the sense of that I don't belong. And these cards are my support system. It was, I mean, honestly, it shocked me to feel, have that feeling, it, that realization. I thought, well, these are just pieces of paper that I taped stuff, glued stuff on. But in fact, they're an embodiment of who I am. 
So collage, I use it all the time. I can do several readings uh, a week, but I really love it. And there are so many people that continue to just get drawn to the process. I challenge everybody to make a card, make a card. A four card reading, and so what do those cards each say and what do they say to each other? And then when we did the exercise today where we had the, the netters dialoguing with themselves, I'm a play therapist, so I could take my cards like puppets, and they were talking to each other, <laughs> and it was so much fun, and it was lively, and you know, the voices were different, the energies were different, you know, it really was a conversation. It was like a family therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every time I've done it, it's been like, whoa, uh -huh. <laughs> that really yeah. is, wow, you know, that's amazing how that happened. Oh, and this is one of my tree cards the, after the trees were cut down. Isn't that great? I love that one. It's been special because it's connected parts of me that had lay dormant for a few years. Um, I'm, I used to love to collage and be creative in that way. To bring that into more of an intuitive process is really rewarding. This community is really big, but the other thing I discovered was that I had a community in my own cards. Mm -hmm. That was so exciting that I can go to these cards and get information, get um, ideas. Yeah, I don't think you ever have to be alone again. And things go on in the box of cards that you have. You don't know what's going to go they on. They have conversations that. at night. Right. 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 Things change and they talk to each other. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Same as what happens inside yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. it. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It's all that, all those different well, aspects. That's like what we were talking about, yeah. that the cards never stop talking because depending on who's next to them, they might have a totally different dialogue. We were doing uh, big consciousness jumps. Mm boom, 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 throughout the, the whole training mm -hmm. and, and, and expanding. This, here's my happy card. The cows are always, in my life, they've always been a comfort. They're, they're slow moving, they're kind. She's looking up from these wonderful, luscious strawberries. And that's Lake Michigan, the beach, uh, the dune near where I live. And uh, somebody joyously just hopping into the lake. Kind of little thing here. Chinese funeral papers. Not too many airplane rides. Faceless, right? It's opened up another portal into whoa you thought it's just an art process huh it's not okay it's way deeper than an art process i mean art for me personally is very therapeutic so collage is a therapeutic process inner heart learning like something that opened up even deeper than just learning up here you learn in a like, I can't even, I don't even have words for it. It's almost like you learn something in here. I, I loved collage and I had mm -hmm. done a lot of vision boards and other things with collage, mm -hmm. but this is so much deeper than just a vision board. And personally, I just feel like, I felt like how much I opened over the course of several mm -hmm. days, like mm -hmm. how much I shifted and I changed as a, you know, in my state, just being around everybody who's doing this work, who understands what this work is about, um, how transformative it is. Soul Collage offered me the new opportunity and skills of interpreting in reading the, the messages, the guidance, the inner wisdom of the images, the combination, combining of the images, the juxtapositions, the dualities in life, the archetypes, the strong messages of what parts of myself have been unknown and unexpressed. Uh, this work is so much about self-acceptance and accepting all parts of who you are. What we really want to see is the transformation become widespread. You know, the fact that you really learn about yourself when you do it and you practice soul collage and you do it in community, it would be wonderful if 
a lot of the world had some way of doing that. Soul collage isn't the only way to do that, of course, mm -hmm. but it's one very good way that's also fun. <laughs> so we hope that it spreads for that reason. Uh, having an amazing time with an amazing group of people and the uh, process and the philosophy behind it is absolutely fantastic. You know, my husband's an artist and I'm a frustrated artist. I hadn't been doing it for a long time. But then something happened and I saw the depth of what each of these cards, when we began to read them, and I got so excited. So it, you know, I, I can see where this could be a life, it, it is, it could be a lifelong process, mm -hmm. really exciting mm -hmm. transformation. Yeah. It, it felt like the heart connection was made, mm -hmm. like boom, and mm -hmm. everybody dropped into the space and stayed there basically for the rest of the workshop. But you know, it made the learning experience very communal mm -hmm. and, um, and just deep. But does it it's not? like really owning it. One of the disconnects is we don't take responsibility so easy to look out there and be at the effect of people, places, circumstances, and live like that, like that's happening. So I've got to, it's almost like survival mode. When we work with them and see how powerful they are, they can heal us. Now I, I know there's a lot of people who would not agree that by suppressing actions or suppressing ideas or feelings or thoughts, that it might harm them in some way. It's, it's pretty amazing. And I, I don't really relate to that card much, as much as I did. It's, it's like something that was in my past. And that's really exciting, because I never thought that I would have any relief from RA. But in fact, I do. And I don't do medication anymore. I don't, haven't done it for a couple years. Mostly diet, exercise, but it's really, it's really, and, and it's really these netters, I think. I have my grandmother card because I care for my grandson, and I have my abandoned child self. I have more than 300 cards at this point, and they are, everybody has parts of themselves that get wounded over time. And one of the things that I love about the soul collage process is whether we had a parent who couldn't handle our anger which was healthy and natural as kids. Yeah. Robert Bly talks about the black bag. You kind of shove it in there and, okay, I'm not going to feel anger. But we get out of balance and we lose essential parts of ourselves over time. So the soul collage process provides everybody the opportunity in a very non-judgmental, supportive, fun, affordable setting to make collages. And each collage represents a part of you. In time, you have a whole deck that forms. So oh, these cards just kind of give voice to parts of yourself. Here's one I did after I, um, after my husband and I hit a deer and killed it um, along the road near where we live at night. And, uh, and I grieved that poor deer very much. So I use them for a lot of different things. I have been working it into my profession, which includes energy work, energy healing. I made a card for my migraines that I've had since I was early childhood. And I have been actually using the card as a focus tool to do Reiki when I have migraines. I can't say that it is having a curative effect. However, I feel like there's a shift in my relationship to the migraine and to the process of the migraines because I'm not just working with the pain itself, I also have this really rich imagery uh, for a card that I call my beautiful migraine, making friends with it, finding out how it can be an ally, what I can learn from that. And so that's one card that I'm using. There was quite a shift, like an 80% reduction in the migraine headaches because I put out at the very beginning of that six month period that I wanted to see what I could do with my migraines. Uh, and part of what happened for working with it was making this card. So many things converging. I, don't, I can't attribute it solely to soul collage, but soul collage was that card was a piece of, of that work. I was in culinary, teaching culinary and and hating myself, and all of a sudden my wrist would 
you know, blow up my knee and it would be very painful. And it was a message. And it was a message I couldn't hear then. But now I can, especially I can more easily through the netters. I really trust their voice. And it's my own voice, but it's a de- it comes from a deeper place. It's almost like, like you almost go into a trance, you know, when you start reading them. It's like they just, it just kind of comes out of you. It draws out of you something that you might not be able to do on your own. It combines this wonderful sense of uh, creativity um, with a deeper inner knowing. One of the things I love about Soul Collage is that it has sparked joy in my life. I have increased in my confidence. I am happy. I can find my way out of any situation that is uncomfortable because I have my deck to refer to. This is my dog. (laughs) I see soul collage as a process to tidy our souls. And here's one of my dad who I had a difficult relationship with. And it's kind of dark, but there are these lotuses all around, which denote for me that he was a really important impetus in my life for spirituality. Mm. And he was a fix-it guy. But there was the last time I ever remember getting a hug from him, and I was probably about three or four there. You know, oh well, I should say I forced him to as I, when I became an adult. Soul collage is just an awesome way to give a voice to these parts of us that typically remain unconscious. Ah, here's my mother card. This is really one of my favorite. My mother grew up in Ukraine and that's her as a child. That's her home in Ukraine. It's her family. And uh, this card uh, just comforts me because she's been gone 10 years now. The cards just, they run the gamut from your, your painful aspects, parts of yourself that you reject, to your family and experiences. Yeah, it's really, it's fun. Breaking the ego and the body and the mind out into all these different parts feels like it's another level of healing the mind. Well, I love that the interconnectedness of everyone mm. and then it, and it brings in that idea of the one and the many. Working in Circo already sends a message. I really invite you to create that possibility in your spaces as much as you can. This is just a, an in-depth, profoundly deep process of self-exploration, guidance, wisdom, and support. There's so many parts of myself that I now know and I've discovered. 100% behind um, everything involved with this and, uh, and what we're learning and, and what we're seeing and experiencing. It's uh, truly amazing. There's so much mystery in art and perhaps that's what is so compelling about collage art and yet at the same time as in everything the duality of even though there's a mystery the irony of knowing what the symbolisms are the archetypes the the messages add such depth to collage work to our art understanding is knowledge all it's like every facilitator can approach it with their own style and and do what feels right for them. Yeah, it's more like there's a soft checklist. I had read the book, Sina's book, Soul Collage Evolving. I had read it many times, but certain things didn't really sink in until I talked to other people. The, um, the book, the information, the resources is unbelievable. I didn't realize uh, there was so much available. Sina really loved the title of her second book, so Soul Collage Evolving. She said it is evolving. She was so happy to include all the new ways that people were using it in that book. And it's still doing it. Still doing it. Yep. Uh, the last population I worked with was people that were in the process of recovering from drugs and alcohol, and I could see this as an amazing vehicle for them. The really, really gift of soul collage is that you can adapt it for any population. Because I've worked with kids with disabilities, people with HIV, AIDS, people in the LGBT community. You can kind of customize a workshop where you get fantastic results from from. Uh, the images that you build into the workshop. So 
I mean, it's just a, a vehicle that, that has limitless possibilities. Yeah, that's the word I would use too. Limitless, is that it's not constricted to any kind of group. And that's part of the reason why I love it, is because it's timeless, it's limitless, it's diverse. You can modify it. It depends on how deep your audience can go or is willing to go. And it's really a, a, a very versatile vehicle. What attracted me to it was my love for images because I'm a photographer. I'm also um, an organized, I created the Day Runner. I have a lot of things that fall in place. I created a journal for women. I did a lot of vision boarding. It was the perfect step up for me to, to do soul collage, like a natural process evolution from my work and to work with myself, my own processing and working with other people. It is giving me a lot of inspiration uh, to take some creativity and imagination into what I want to do with it. And basically what I want to do with Soul Collage is work with men. I've been part of a men's movement uh, group for 27 years. We do lots of different processes. We do ceremony and, and we do deep inner work. And this is going to be something that will add to that, something that will enhance that and, and bring out uh, other pieces of men I work with that will be valuable for them and for the group as a process. Um, one of the populations that I'm drawn to is women in the postpartum period or really years after as they process it of being able to put to image their birthing experience as well as the transition into motherhood and I think that's really sacred space and I'm personally really passionate about that life transition for women. It just continues to grow. Soul Collage touches the hearts and the lives of everybody because it's accessible and it has a universal practice that you can embody and customized to whatever your profession is. And for many people, Soul Collage becomes their profession as a Soul Collage facilitator. So it really offers a lot, and we're so happy that Sina Frost, who's the founder, started this. Embracing this Soul Collage process to bring it forth to children for sure. Save this child. Wow. There's huge need everywhere. I know I want to share it with an ever widening circle of friends, colleagues. Age makes no difference to me. It really doesn't. Because I've taught from preschool through grade six in my career, but I'm equally comfortable presenting to uh, elderly. You know, the elders have so much and they're so neglected in this culture. The old folks home, the young folks home, the different places and of course it's too many to mention the different kinds of places that Soul Collage has found itself into. It's great to have the in-person experience and we've got trainings going on all over the world. It offers a forum modality of self-interpretation which is awareness, self-growth. It allows clients that I work with as I teach soul collage and, as I, and I teach collage, the clients get to see parts of themselves that have been disowned, exiled parts, behaviors, for instance, unknown. They're, it's almost in our blind spots that now become, we're aware of them, so they're no longer hidden and it's so much easier once parts of us are identified they're easier to manage and thus mm. self you know, choice we get to choose does this support us does this suck energy from us is this working in my life so it's just been s tremendously therapeutic in working with my clients Families in general, because I think all families can benefit from this. I just would like to see what it can do and how to be able to have really authentic conversations with families and let the kids have voices. It empowers your individual voice and it, um, it just creates a stronger community when that happens. I'm also a homeopath and so I use soul collage in my healing practice with people. I was searching for like a little more structure and support to the work I've been doing in kind of expressive arts and 
and I feel like this is the best, but I was afraid of being constrained by in, an institution. And I've been very rebellious. Maybe I have a card for that. Who knows? But, um, <laughs> you know, forthcoming. But, like, I don't want to be constrained by some institution because mm -hmm. I find institutional constraints very limiting and um, I don't want them. I want to be free. I want to be myself. Team building activity, a blowing off steam afternoon that your team mm -hmm. can do this. Um, as a way to better get to know each other, better get to know themselves. I'd like to take it into a healing community, you know, my 12-step community. Um, I'd like to maybe go to hospitals or uh, treatment centers. What, what is my role in helping to solve this? Not, you should do this and why aren't you doing that? And let's make a checklist on a board, right? This is, it completely flips it from how people normally think another with another. I mean, this is a fundamental shift from we are believing in some external authority that we're looking to, like, give us the permission, give us the knowledge, give us the, the wisdom, right? We don't have it. Give it to us. Like, I have to learn. I don't have enough to... We're all self-sufficient. We mm -hmm. all have this power within us with just such small resources, right? I mean, just magazines, mm -hmm. just cards, just glue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's nothing, right? you can access these depths and they're, they're boundless. Mm -hmm. And to say, and to have the gift of giving that to someone else to say, who doesn't know yet that they have it within them, and to say, hey, you can do it too. It's in you. Like, I don't have the answer for you. I don't have the answer for you. You do. Mm -hmm. uh, and keep an open mind and develop and, and that this, this technique is so incredible in its depth and its complexity, but it's simplicity as well. It's like complex, but not complicated. Hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and how flexible it is, and how applicable it can be to almost any situation. It's very trusting, and it's. I really appreciate that. It, it lets my rebellious uh, part sort of relax. Like and so, as a therapist, I'm looking forward to being able to bring this as a tool into the therapy process for all clients, but I think it will be especially powerful for clients that have a harder time verbalizing what they're going through and both for teenagers <laughs> as well as many other people. I think that will be a really helpful tool for them to be able to express themselves in a less traditional way and for them to find their voice and their intuition and, and be empowered that they can kind of find answers for themselves with the right support and the right parameters, which I think is really powerful. I'm excited about you bringing this work to the women in business that I work with who feel limited by their introversion. So I'm really excited to add a, a different element, a different way that they could look inside and see what their gifts are inside of you know, that introversion or that person or how they perceive themselves. In my volunteer work with a special needs organization, I'm planning on uh, first doing a session with the teachers and introducing it to them and then introducing it to the um, youth volunteers who are high school mm -hmm. students. And then we're gonna bring it to, to the special needs individuals. But also in the women's group that I'm a part of, uh, which will be super easy because they're, they're just gonna love it. And then um, also in my coaching, um, so, yeah, there, it's just like endless. I don't know what's going to happen. But I am a chef educator, uh, but I'm transitioning. <laughs> soul collage do for them? It's what true. could soul collage do for elders? Oh, wow. Well, it can, it can. Part of the amazing gift of this is that we all have gifts, genius to share. And that is one of the, the, the parts of this culture like, no, we're, we're going to shunt them over there and we're not going to listen to their wisdom and their knowledge. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. If there's ever a time when we need their wisdom and their knowledge, it is now. Okay? So it's going to give them a platform to then, okay, I love this process. I learned this process. Then when their sons, daughters, grandchildren come to visit, I would like to show you something. I would like to share that with you. I mean, it can really bridge generationally. I, I really see the intergenerational bridging possibilities. It's a journey of exploration. I don't know where this is going to lead. I'm very delighted to be on this journey. I'm delighted to be on this journey because it's a deep one, a broad one. It's an embracing, inclusive one. It's, it's, it's rippling. I, I'm just sensing over this weekend, 
the rippling aspect of ooh, this is going to go, this is going to keep moving, this is going to keep going. This process should be in art school 101 as a foundational piece. This process can be so transformative. It really works. If there's gold, there's little pieces of, of amazing information. It's just, it's a lifesaver. So I love it. Viva Sonora!